The Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra comes with plenty of useful features packed inside the UI, but a lot of them aren't so obvious, and I bet there's a lot of them that you don't actually know about. So today, I'm gonna to show you the best ones to get the most out of your phone. So make sure you hit subscribe and we'll get right into it. So first up, we've got something that all Galaxy S24 Ultra users need to do straight away. And I can see why Samsung do this, but I still don't agree with it. Now, of course, you've got your new phone with your bright and high res display, but out of the box, it's not actually running at its full resolution. So it's really not the spec that you paid for or wanted. Now, if you head into settings and then scroll down into display, you then scroll down a bit and you'll see that your screen resolution is set to full HD+, which is 2340 by 1080. If we press on that, we can change it to 3120 by 1440, which is Quad HD, and this is gonna give you a much sharper, more detailed image. Now you just select it and hit apply and you're done. And I would recommend this for all users, but the only downside is that it will use more battery. So if you find that your phone's battery isn't lasting you the day, then you may benefit from running the lower 1080 resolution. But for most users, the Quad HD Plus is gonna be the best option. Now next up, you can actually make your phone operate a lot faster, or at least appear to operate a lot faster, and it's something that I actually do with all of my Android phones. If you take a look at how the new windows are opening and changing here, it's smooth and it's okay, but personally I like it to just be that little bit faster, as it feels a lot more comfortable to use. Now to enable this, all we've got to do is swipe down from the top and go into settings, You'll then need to choose developer options at the very bottom, but if you've never done this before, then you won't have developer options just yet. So to enable it, you need to go into about phone, scroll down and select software information, and then where it says the build number, you just keep tapping that until it says that you're now a developer. And I believe it's eight times in total that you have to press it. Once you've done that, you can just tap back twice and then head to developer options at the bottom. Now, if we scroll down in here, you can see Windows Animation Scale, Transition Animation Scale, and then Animation Duration Scale, and they're all set to one times by default. And all you have to do is change it to 0.5 times to double the speed of everything. And you can also turn the animation completely off, so every window is just gonna instantly appear. But personally, I find if you do this, it can make it feel a bit clunky, as there's no animation at all. Now next up, we've got the best way to protect your battery, and while it's not needed, it is something I recommend doing, as it will help your battery and increase its lifespan. If you go into settings again, and you then go into battery, we've got something called battery protection, and what this does is it stops your charger just keeping the phone at 100% battery, which will reduce its life over time. If you've got your phone charging during the day or while you're asleep, keeping it at 100% while charging just isn't the most healthy thing for a battery. And we've got three levels of protection to counteract that. Basic is gonna stop charging at 100% and then it won't charge again until it reaches 95%. We've got maximum, which will stop charging at 80% battery. And then we've got the adaptive charging. Now, maximum is a bit extreme and no one wants to wake up with just 80% battery, but adaptive is the one that I would recommend as it's the best of both worlds. Using adaptive means that while you're sleeping, it's not gonna charge above 80% to protect the battery, but it's then gonna charge to 100% before you wake up, and it's gonna know the wake up time based on your general phone usage. Now, of course, using this, you do have to be careful if you're gonna wake up earlier than usual. And if you always wake up at different times, then I would just recommend using basic instead. Now, next up, we've got a customization to the display itself. And what most people, I guess, are gonna be happy with the way everything looks by default. Personally, I wanna be able to fit much more on the screen so I can see as much as possible. Now, if we go into settings and then into display, you can first reduce the font size to be able to fit more on the screen at once. Or if you have trouble seeing what's on the screen, you can of course make it bigger. And you can also change the font, but I actually quite like the default one. If we go back, we can also change the screen zoom. And by default, it's one up from the lower setting, but I actually prefer the lower setting, just be able to see more on the screen at once. And again, if you're finding it hard to read or see things on display, you can also make it bigger. Next up, we've got a cool feature for your wallpapers that isn't so obvious, and it's hidden within the phone settings. So if we scroll down into settings and scroll down to advanced features, there's a lot you can customize in here, but you'll see that we've got a settings for labs. And if we go into here, you'll see something called photo ambient wallpaper. Now, personally, I really like this and I think it just makes things a lot more dynamic. And it's actually gonna change your wallpaper based on the time or the weather. 
And once you've enabled it, if you go into Change Wallpaper, we can scroll down to Creative and you'll now have an option for Ambient Wallpapers. One of the downsides to Ambient Wallpapers is that you can only select wallpapers from your photos and not the default wallpapers. But of course, if you really want them, then just download the default wallpaper separately and save them on your device. But if we press play here, you can see an example of how it reacts to rain and snow for your wallpapers. And at the moment, you can only choose these wallpapers for your lock screen, and it won't do it for the phone's actual wallpaper. While we're in the lab section, another feature that I recommend enabling is the multi-window for all apps. Unless, of course, you never use multi-window, then don't worry. But this is going to allow any app to work in the split screen mode or the pop-up view, regardless of whether or not they've actually been designed to work with it. And personally, I feel it's just better to have the option to use any app that you want. Next up, we've got another feature that isn't so obvious. And the Galaxy S24 Ultra has plenty of RAM to keep your apps running in the background, but sometimes it may close something that you didn't want it to, which could be frustrating if you're doing something like editing a video and you don't want it to be closed. If we swipe up halfway to view all of our open applications, you can actually specifically select one by pressing the icon at the top and then choose Keep Open. No matter what you do with your device now, it's going to keep this app running in the background and you can see it's enabled by the padlock icon in the bottom right. Now, this can also be useful if you've got way too many apps open at the same time and you want to close all of them except one or two. If you lock the ones that you don't want to close, you can then press Close All and as you can see, everything is now closed apart from the ones I selected. And then to unlock them again, all you have to do is single press on the padlock and they can now be closed again. Next up, we've got the ability to change the size of the keyboard that I find very useful. And with the keyboard open, if you press the gear icon to go into the settings, there's actually a lot of customizations in here that I recommend you read through carefully to customize the keyboard to your liking. But one thing you may not have been aware of is the ability to change its size. So if we select size and transparency, you can make it bigger or smaller, and we can even move its location if you prefer it higher up on the display. Now we've also got a text extractor hidden away in the keyboard, and when you're sending a message or typing anything on the device, you can quickly use text from the real world using a camera. And when you've got the keyboard open, you can press the three dots at the top right and then choose extract text. It then opens up the camera and adds a selection box around the text, if you press the paste button, it's just going to dump the whole text in at once, but you can also select the text icon in the bottom right hand corner, and it's then going to take a picture and you can choose the exact pieces of text that you'll want to use. Now finally, we've got another keyboard feature that's hidden away and it's the selection tool for when you want to select an exact bit of text and you're having trouble doing it with your fingers or the S Pen. Now again, if we press the three dots in the top right of the keyboard, it gives us more options. And if we then press on the plus icon, we can add even more. Now, if you press and hold on the text editing, it's going to let you drag it into your keyboard shortcuts. And now when I press the three dots in the top right, you can see I can select it. Now with this in use, we can use the arrows to accurately select text. We can then highlight text, cut, copy or paste. And this is something that you're not going to need to use all the time, but it's very useful when you need it. So that's it for today's hidden features for the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. But make sure you subscribe to the channel for all of the latest tricks and tips when it comes to your smartphone.